He wants your worship. So he comes in and sows those seeds of doubt. And if we don't watch it, we'll be watching heroes today that we think are heroes, and they're far from being that. That's Satan's job is to distract us, to fool us, to take us away from our one true hero, Jesus Christ. He tempted Jesus in the garden. He tried to, to incite Herod to rage to kill all the babies. He did everything he could do to stop Jesus from dying on the cross for yours and mine's sin. But Jesus prevailed. He is our superhero. He has defeated everything and He's empowered us with His Spirit so that we can accomplish things in this world. Do we imitate heroes? You bet you we do. How about you, Jerry? Did you ever do that bullwhip I heard Lash LaRue mention, right? Jacob, do you know who Lash LaRue is? Not a clue. Look at that look on his face. Not a clue. I vaguely do. But let me tell you something that now that the two of you can relate. You ever heard of a character called Indiana Jones? Yep. Oh, yep. Who do you think taught Lash LaRue the bullwhip? Indiana Jones. So now we have something that, oh, I, I didn't know that. We can talk about Oh, did I say it backwards? Yes, Lash taught Indiana Jones. Sorry about that. And Jacob knows who Indiana Jones is. Maybe not a bad role model. You know, we're not going to get in and debate that. But, but we do imitate our heroes. It's something that we do. So what does the Bible say about imitating? Well, in the New Testament, the Greek word is me may owe me. I may have said that right, I may not. It stands or means mimic. We actually mimic those people. Second Thessalonians 3 7 says, For you yourselves know you ought to follow our example. Paul's talking that they, to the Christians and saying you ought to follow our example that we make, which makes it even harder. That means that I am even more accountable for my actions. We were not idle when we were with you. Skipping down to verse 9, it says, We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. 3 John chapter 1, verse 11 says, Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Pretty clear guidelines, isn't it? So if you're choosing a hero, whoever it might be, and they're not imitating God, then chances are maybe that shouldn't be your hero. And Hebrews 13, 7 says, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. I don't know if you caught it last week from Bob's message, but if you read through Hebrews 11, these were heroic characters of the Old Testament that were commended for what? Their faith. Faith is what made them different. That's what leads to righteousness, is our faith, our belief in Jesus Christ. Our heroes should be something we want to mimic or imitate, something that we could pattern our lives after. So be very careful when you're picking heroes. Back to Green Lantern. Some of you probably don't know who Green Lantern is, so I'll give you a little bit of uh, information there. Your Green Lantern was in New York City primarily, right? And he started out in the 1940s as a comic character, pretty much in New York City, and he had a power of a ring, and he fought against bad guys. That's how the su superhero came about. They fought against bad guys, against tyranny in the world. So there's some, there's some good there. But guess what? In 1949, Green Lantern went, he was no more, because of the lack of people interested in comic book heroes. Well, that's not true today. Not at all. So with the popularity of science fiction, Green Lantern came back in the 50s and he became a cosmic superhero, a kind of cosmic law enforcement officer who yielded the power that was in this ring and he could take this ring and make objects out of it and he would fight tyranny that way. He was a cosmic police officer, so to speak. His motto was this, in brightest day, in blackest night, and Jacob's saying it right now. See, look, if you didn't see. He knows it. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, green lantern's light. Now, I think it's kind of strange here, but will is where his power comes from. 
Will is exactly where our power comes from also, but we have to deny ourselves, take up the cross of Jesus and follow after Him. We have to die to our will and let God's will be dominant in our life. Will is the, pro is the thing here that gives the power. But in a Christian's life, it's God's will rather than our own will. And it says in here, let those who worship evil's might. Not that they like evil's might. Not that they can tolerate evil's might, but they worship evil's might. Because see, if you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping Satan. It's black and white. There's no gray. If you die without knowing Jesus Christ, you will spend an eternity apart from God. Plain and simple. So we need to pick heroes that are heroic. People that we can look up to. Not people that are not heroes. Well, the problem is, like I said, that Hollywood changes that all the time. Even our characters change. I like Captain America. That's why I've got Captain America on. He's a good, solid character that actually even polices the other guys and says, hey, watch your mouth and so forth. And if you got that little clip, here's what he says one time in one of his movies. And Bob reminded me of this phrase. If you didn't catch it, she was saying, that was Black Widow, was saying these guys are basically gods, these superheroes. And they are to our children. And he said back, there's only one God, and he doesn't dress like those guys. Captain America is a pretty decent superhero character. Now, get your laugh, okay? How do I look? Okay? Thank you. But see, when Hollywood changes Captain America and he starts becoming something that's not heroic, then this is going to go bye-bye. And I'm not going to take my son to go see those kind of movies or anything else because I want him to imitate godly character. I want him to see a spirit-filled power life that I live, not by my own will, but by God's will. So who is your hero? Who do you imitate your life after? You say, well, I don't imitate my life. I just go see this kind of movie or do this kind of thing, but I don't imitate it. You don't? So when it comes up and you watch this kind of movie and there's this thing that should not have been said or done in it, you don't come tell me, of course, because I'm the pastor. You might not come to tell Jerry, but what about your colleagues at work that are talking about it, looking for that common ground with you again, and say, hey, did you see that movie? And when the guy said this and did this, and then your Christian testimony is on the line. First of all, you should say, I didn't see that movie. Second of all, you shouldn't say, yeah, that was, oh, that wasn't funny, sorry. We do imitate and pattern our lives after whether we realize it or not. Green Lantern is a good character. Or at least he has been. He made his film debut in 2011. That's when he hit the blockbuster screen. Before that, we watched motion pictures. Now we watch the big screen. Again, some of the youth may not even know what the term motion picture means. We watched the big screen. Well, that movie grossed a little over $200 million, which is not that great for a superhero movie. And it cost right at $200 million to make. It's kind of ironic, the same superhero that the same actor that played that superhero is now in the top of the box office hits too and people especially watching this will say oh, I don't like you maybe disrespecting this new superhero well he's not super and he's not a hero those are his own words he's taking the level to a different the superhero to a different image because of what's popular so when we wonder in our society why it's acceptable to do this or that it's because we've allowed it to get to that point. Satan doesn't just come out and say, eat the fruit. He says, is that what God really says? The actor that played Green Lantern back in 2011 is now the same actor that's the biggest movie out this week. And he's not a superhero. He is not a hero. The movie's an R-rated Marvel comic, the first R-rated Marvel comic that there's been. And it's setting new precedent and new grounds. Batman versus Superman's coming out, and they're talking about making it even more graphic because of the success of this movie. So when they take God out of the Captain America 
and he starts cussing and killing people, which killing people has always been something a superhero didn't do, then it's time to say, this hero's not super. I'm not going to follow that. Because I want to fill myself with light rather than darkness. I want to be a light to this world. I don't want to hide my light. What's wrong with this picture? Here's what the superhero says about it himself, and I quote, This is a different kind of superhero story. I didn't ask to be super, and I'm not a hero. Its opening debut was the biggest box office debut there was. Well, the next week, a Jesus movie came out. In the second week, the blockbuster superhero movie still grossed $60 million. The Jesus movie grossed $11 million. Something's wrong with our priorities. God's Not Dead 2 is coming out here in a month. God's Not Dead was a huge success. It brought in $60 million. The new Marvel superhero is approaching $300 million. Do you know what the biggest R-rated movie of all times was before this movie? Because it's most likely going to beat that. Do you know what it was? It was a movie about a person suffering. And the reason that they wanted to make it R-rated is because they couldn't detune the contents of the movie without detuning the meaning. It's called The Passion of the Christ. And I don't think it did justice to what my Jesus went through for me. But this new superhero movie not only will knock off the current Jesus movie, but it will knock off the all-time Jesus movie. There's something wrong with our priorities. And I'm not condemning you if you've seen it or you desire to see it anything else. My point is to show you there's right and there's wrong. There's black and there's white. You're either living a life according to imitating God and imitating others that follow Jesus Christ or you're not. And it does affect you. If I pulled out my lunchbox and I had some six-month-old meat that had been sitting in it, would you want a bite of it? Because it'd make you sick. So why would you put in your body vulgarity and filthiness? This new movie says one of the expletives that we find, the four-letter words we find the most vulgar, 84 times, I believe, is that right? 86 times. And we just say, well, that's okay, because I'm not going to talk that way. I wish they didn't have that in there. They didn't need to have it, but they did have it in there. And it'll be a progression until we see other superheroes doing that. The new Wolverine movie is going for an R rating. That's not the kind of superheroes that Lash was, or the kind of superhero that Green Lantern was. But those superheroes may change. And when we see our world changing around us, it's not hard to figure out why. It's because we allow it. We're not the light to the world. The light is supposed to expose the darkness. Bring to truth. So what do we do about it? Well, we take a stand. I'm sure, like I said, that many people will find what I'm saying wrong because I love that movie or whatever. And I've been careful not even to say the movie. But right is right, wrong is wrong. My superhero is Jesus. And if I don't show that, how would you ever know that's my superhero? And if I show that, then maybe my son will see it. Maybe Spencer will see it. Maybe Tyler will see it. It's good to see you here today, too, and your family. And maybe they will want to imitate me, imitate my superhero, Jesus. I know, like I said, that makes me stand even more accountable. But Jesus was clear when he said, if you want to be my disciple... He didn't say you have to be. It's your choice. But he said, if you want to be, then deny yourself. That's the first step. Take up your cross and follow me. He didn't say play games at it. He didn't say come every once in a while when you decide to and then go back into the darkness. He said come out of the darkness and into the light. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You've been born again. The old is gone away and the new has come. And he gave us a message of reconciliation to the world to be that light. In the scripture we read this morning from Mark, I want to point this out to you. He says, he, th he then began to teach them. That's what Jesus does. And so many times the way we teach is through repetition. It's through practice, through learning. So it's never redundant. 
And it's not even really repetitious. Redundant means no longer needed or useful. Super, superfluous. I didn't say it right. Synonyms are unnecessary, not required, unessential, unneeded, and uncalled for. Repetitive means containing or characterized by repetition, especially when unnecessary or tiresome. Monotonous, boring, mundane, dreary, and tiresome. Well, I could get up here and teach the same message over and over and over. And hopefully, with me doing it more and more, I was teaching on the same thing that Bob taught about last week, hopefully we will learn Jesus used the same techniques. That is why you practice music, so that you get better and better at it. So yes, you need to practice being a superhero. Be a superhero to someone else. Find that common ground, Green Lantern, and discuss it. Because Jacob needs mentoring. And Bob needs to be able to see the youth of this world. So that we can all be like Christ. So that we can be part of the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters. So that we're not alienated and say, Whoa, what about drums in here? Instead we say, Thank God Spencer is here. It is so good to see some of our children. Joy, I'll mention you too. And anybody I haven't mentioned, I'm just glad to see you. To see some of these youth coming. Because they are searching in this world and they need to see what a hero, a true hero looks like. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law. And that he must be killed and after three days rise again. This is what Jesus was teaching them. He spoke plainly about this. Get that. He was clear. His disciples should have got it by now. We're eight chapters into Mark. There's only 16. We're halfway through the story. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciple, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Peter didn't say you're acting in a way... I mean, God didn't say you're acting in a way that you shouldn't. He didn't say you're acting like Satan. He called Peter Satan. He got straight to the point... The disciple that he would be the rock and build his church upon. He said, Peter, you are Satan. Because you, you don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Matthew gives this same account, but he says, you are a stumbling block to me. How would you like to be a stumbling block to Jesus Christ? That's what Peter was doing by not following after what God's will was. If he was in tune with God's will, he would realize that Jesus had to come. Instead, he was doing the exact same thing that Satan did in tempting Jesus, saying, don't die for these people. I'll give you everything. Just don't die for these people. Why? Because Satan wants our worship rather than God's. He wants to deceive us. And he called the crowd to him along with his disciples. So not only did he do that to Peter, but he rebuked him in front of everyone. And he said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. That's the formula. Doesn't mean you can go on being the same person. If you try to do that, you'll be miserable. And not only will you be miserable, but you will be Satan. You will be doing his bidding. And you'll be a stumbling block to Jesus Christ and what He's trying to do in bring others to salvation and eternal rewards and reconciliation with God the Father. It's black or white. Jesus is teaching us. We just have to listen. We have to let things not distract us. So our heroes need to be an important part of it. A hero should be someone who has character traits that we want to follow after. And when they're doing that, fine. When they stop being that, they stop being my hero, plain and simple. Hollywood has a way of changing things because they're after this and they're led by the prince of this world. They don't understand. So it won't surprise me if before long you won't hear Captain America saying anything about God anymore. It won't surprise me a bit. I hope that that's not the case. But if that day comes, he will not be my superhero. So what do we do? Like I said, we fill ourselves with good things. And we try to be an example of those who are stronger in faith to those who aren't. 
those who have experienced more have gone through the things. That's the reason I teach Jacob as a parent. I don't want him to go through the things that I had to learn the hard way. I don't want my child to suffer. And I want to teach him what's right, and I want to be the example for him. I don't want to have him say, well, you teach this, Dad, but you do this. Because how awful is that statement? I want my light to shine and my testimony to be true. So that in brightest day and blackness, blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's, evil's might beware my power, green lantern's light. Beware my testimony. Beware my hero, Jesus Christ. This new superhero, here's his, here's his motto, just so you know it and how it compares. In lamest day and dopest night, no Twinkies shall escape my bite. Well, that's funny, that part is, right? For those who challenge be authors might, beware my mouth by Deadpool's light. He tells you right off, beware my mouth. If you're beware of something, shouldn't you leave? If it says beware hungry grizzly bear inside, are you going to go inside and see if he's hungry? I could go on about the movie, but I won't. Because my point is not that whatsoever. My point is, is we need heroes. And our world is hurting so bad and searching for them. And the heroes that they're seeing are not heroes that imitate Jesus Christ. Superheroes are great things. They have super traits. But when they're not super at all, they're not a hero at all, are they? They're not like Christ. They're more like what? An antichrist. Because if you're the opposite of Christ, you're an antichrist. Bob went over to Hebrews chapter 11, and we saw many fine examples of heroes and heroines from the Old Testament. That's what the author was trying to tell. Look back at your history. Look at these examples of people who followed their faith. Even though they did not see the outcome and the reality of the Savior coming, they still were faithful, and it was accounted unto them unto righteousness. Noah, when the whole world, we talked about that before, of 10 million people or so, did not worship God. In fact, they were wicked. Noah said, I will still stand firm. And into his ark he went for safety, and so did his family. He was a righteous man because of his faith. If you look at the earthly definition, if you type up hero characteristics, you'll come up with courage, selflessness, humility, patience, and caring. Well, that's a pretty good standard, and that's an earthly definition. But when you see a hero who doesn't follow these things, isn't time to say, maybe he's not a hero? Maybe that should be your checklist. And maybe take it a step even further and make your checklist, is he like Christ? Is he imitating Christ's behavior? What does his faith show? James says to show me your faith by your deeds. Without it, it's dead. If he says he has faith and he doesn't live a life accordingly, he's still not a hero. A hero imitates Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 10, I'm going to go back before you did, Bob. It says in verse 19... Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is His body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Here we could go over the Old Testament. It says constantly to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, soul. Then Jesus repeats that, not to be monotonous or mundane or repetitive or redundant, but to teach us to go over and over again. Because guess what? We're kind of thick-headed sometimes, aren't we? And we need to hear that. With a sincere heart and the full assurance of what faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and our, having our bodies washed with pure water. Then if we skip down to verse 26 and 27, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. You can't just go back to the darkness and pop out to the light when you choose. You have to make a choice. If you're trying to hop back and forth, guess what? You have chose. Jesus tells us we can't serve two masters. You've chose to follow darkness, not light. Because if you chose to follow light, you won't go back to the darkness because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
He didn't die for our sins in vain. He died so that we could overcome because He overcame. Goes, the passage goes on to say, Who has treated us as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace. If we bounce back and forth, we're saying, Jesus, what you did on the cross really doesn't matter to me. The Spirit that you've empowered with, thank you, but I really don't appreciate it. So when that day comes and Jesus says, Depart from me, I do not, did not know you, it won't come as much of a surprise, will it? Maybe my words are harsh, but my words are Jesus' words. If you are saved and your heart is truly changed, and Jesus tells us that the Father is looking for those who truly worship Him, then your heart is changed. You have to walk away from the darkness. Does it mean you're not saved if you're doing that? No, it doesn't. But there will be a point in your life when Jesus says, Hey, are you going to follow after me? Are you going to give it your all? I've told you that several times. But prior to becoming pastor, I said, I'll do anything but that. And then I had to say, I'm sorry, God. Please forgive me. I will do whatever you call me to do. And my life changed for the better because I didn't have any rooms or any closets that I had closed off then. Anything else. Well, am I still going to sin? Oh, yeah. Right, Sherry? Oh, yeah. I will because I am a sinner saved by grace. But if my heart is focused on Him, my light will shine and hopefully others will imitate my works, my behavior, and search out their true hero, Jesus Christ. Verse 29 says, How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Now the author's going even further. Not only have we mocked Jesus Christ and everything, but what do you think the punishment's going to be? Who is treated as an unholy thing... Excuse me. Yeah, did I already read that? Okay. Who, <laughs> confused. Who has treated us an unho as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the Spirit of grace. Verses 36 through 39 says, You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. For in just a little while, He who is coming will come and will not delay. But, by my, right, but my righteous one will live by faith. Everything that He's given us the example for in chapter 11. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. Are you getting the point or is it just repetitive? But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. The author is repeating himself so that you will learn. That you can't continue on. You have to have faith, true faith that comes from a true heart. And that's what the Father is looking for. Faith is, an, is the character trait of a true hero. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2 says, Now faith is the confidence of what we hope for, the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So the author says, This is what I was talking about in chapter 11 when I said, By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. And I gave you the examples so that you can see what a hero is supposed to look like. So that when you see someone who says they're a hero and aren't, or that the world says they're a hero, you say, wait a minute, no, that's not right. That is wrong. And that's when you have to make the stand. I don't care if the world is doing this, it is wrong. And you may suffer for it, for making that decision. But you're saying that I stand to serve my true Master and Lord Jesus Christ, not Satan. Then in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 39 through 12 too, the author says, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us. Wow. So that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. If you don't know those verses, maybe you ought to put them to memory. Because it tells us all of those witnesses. It tells us to throw off everything that hinders us because we are running a race. If we're running a race, why would I want a huge backpack on weighing me down of sin? Why would I not want to throw it aside and discard it? Because I am running a race. There's a limited amount of time that I have to be a testimony to this world and to be 
that faithful servant to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And whenever I fall short, I need to look for those heroes, those examples that are true heroes. And I need to fix my eyes on Jesus, who is our one and only hero, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So what do we do with this? We take and mentor those that we can. We step up our game a notch as necessary and we get on our knees first and prostrate ourselves to God and say, I'm sorry for not being that example that I should have been to my child, to my friends, to my co-workers. What do we do? We study to show ourselves approved. We pray. We spend time trying to build relationships and imitate Jesus Christ so that we can make a difference in this world for the positive, to bring souls to salvation rather than being a stumbling block to Jesus Christ. I don't want to ever hear the words coming out of Jesus' mouth, get behind me, Satan, to me. I know that I've deserved it, and I know that I probably will do that again, but I don't want to hear those words. I want to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let that be your challenge today. Father, we thank you so much for your love. Father, we thank you for true heroes that do have faith. Faith that stands a test of time. Faith that is able to stand boldly and proclaim the gospel message, just as Peter was when he was thrown into prison. The same Peter that you called Satan. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, preached boldly. And when he got out of prison, disregarded any of the things that might happen to him. But instead, the believers prayed for more boldness to preach the gospel message. Let us be the kind of individuals that, that pray those prayers. Let us be the kind of individuals in the church that makes a difference in this world. Let there be no barriers that keep us from each other and let us be no barriers that keep us from taking the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Take our sin and shame from us. Jesus took it all upon Himself at the cross and we thank You for Him overcoming. And we praise You, Father, for all that You have done through Jesus the Son. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>